Are you preparing for a data engineering or data quality engineering interview? In this video, we'll cover real world and conceptual interview questions on Snowflake data metric functions, also known as DMFs. Let's begin. Why would you use DMFs over manual SQL checks or dashboard alerts? DMFs are a better option because they bring structure, automation, and tracking into your key data quality checks. With manual SQL, someone has to write and run queries every time. It's easy to forget or miss steps. Dashboards may show issues, but they usually don't catch row level problems and they don't store the full history of what happened. DMFs solve this by running automatically on a schedule. You don't need to trigger them manually they also store all results in system tables, including which rows failed and when. This makes it easy to track data issues over time and even spot patterns. Another big plus, DMFs are built into Snowflake. So they work well with your existing tables and roles. You can even set alerts or actions based on DMF results, which helps fix problems faster. In short, DMFs save time, reduce manual work, and give you better visibility into your data quality, all in a consistent and scalable way. Next one, how do DMFs support data quality dimensions? DMFs help you measure and monitor key data quality dimensions like completeness, uniqueness, accuracy, and validity. Snowflake has built-in DMFs. For example, if you use the built-in null count DMF, it checks for missing values. This supports the completeness dimension. Duplicate count finds repeated rows, helping with uniqueness. Similarly, pattern mismatch count can catch wrongly formatted fields like phone numbers or zip codes. This supports validity. You can also create custom DMFs to check business rules for example, if a delivery date should always come after an order date, that would support the accuracy dimension. This way, each DMF, whether built-in or custom, helps test if your data meets a certain quality rule that ties back to a specific dimension. So instead of just talking about dimensions in theory, DMFs let you apply them in practice with real checks and real results. Next one, what are common use cases for DMFs in a data pipeline? DMFs are great for automatically checking if your data is clean and reliable at every stage of a pipeline. Some common use cases include checking for missing values using null count, especially in key fields like customer ID or email helps catch data gaps early. Finding duplicate records with duplicate count. This is useful before loading data into reporting layer. Validating data formats like phone numbers, dates, or postal codes using pattern mismatch count helps ensure data is usable. Referential integrity checks. For example, checking that every order has a matching customer in a customer table. Business rule checks using custom DMFs like verifying that revenue is not negative or that a product's discount does not exceed a limit. Timelines checks. Making sure data was updated or loaded within an expected time frame. These checks can be run automatically after data is loaded into a table or stage in the pipeline. This helps catch issues early before they move downstreams into dashboards machine learning models, or finance reports. And since DMFs log detailed results, you can use them to trigger alerts or show failed records, making your pipeline more intelligent and self-monitoring. Next one, how do you associate a custom DMF with a table? To associate a custom DMF with a table in Snowflake, you use the alter table command and the add data metric clause. This tells Snowflake to apply your custom DMF to that table. 
In this case, null count is the name of the custom DMF you have already created. From on column, passes the column as an argument to the DMF. One thing to note, to do this, your role must have the right privileges, especially modify access on the table and usage rights on the DMF. Next, can DMFs work across multiple tables? Yes, custom DMFs in Snowflake can work across multiple tables, but system DMFs cannot. You can design a custom DMF to accept multiple table arguments, just like a store procedure or function that takes more than one input. A common use case is referential integrity. For example, checking that every order in one table has a matching customer in another. In such cases, you would pass both the tables into the DMF, associate it using alter table and let it run automatically. I created a detailed video on how custom DMFs work across tables. Check it out for a deeper understanding. Next one, explain how DMFs are scheduled and how frequently they run. Snowflake gives you three flexible ways to schedule DMFs once they are associated with a table. The schedule is controlled at the table level, meaning all DMFs on the table follow the same schedule. Option 1. Fixed interval schedule. You can schedule DMFs to run every few minutes, hours or days using a simple time interval. This will run all DMFs on the sales data table every 5 minutes. Option 2. Cron based schedule. For more control, you can use a cron expression to run DMFs at specific times like daily at 8 am. This replaces any previous interval based schedule since only one schedule can exist per table. Option 3. Trigger on data changes. This is useful when you want DMFs to run automatically after data changes like inserts or updates. You can check the current schedule using show parameters. So whether you want checks to run every few minutes at a specific time or immediately after data changes, Snowflake DMFs offer flexible automation. Next one, where do DMF results get stored? How do you access them? Snowflake automatically stores all DMF results in a Snowflake managed tables and views under the Snowflake database local schema. You can access the results in three main ways. Option 1. Raw event table. The most detailed results are stored in the system managed table. This is ideal if you want full control over the output. You can build custom views, table functions or store procedures to filter and transform the results data. It's especially useful when you want fine-grained access control or advanced analysis. Option 2. Pre-processed view. If you prefer a cleaner and more readable format, you can query the view. This view is flattened and structured version of the raw table and it includes information like the metric name, the results value, the affected table or column and when the check ran. It's perfect when you want to access results quickly without dealing with raw event structures. Option 3. Table function. The third option is to use the data quality monitoring results table function. It returns the same columns as the view but it is scoped to a single table based on the input you provide. This is useful when you want to limit access to just one table's DMF results, for example, to support secure role-based access in shared environments. So depending on your use case, whether you need full flexibility, quick insights or scoped access, Snowflake gives you multiple ways to work with DMF results efficiently. Next, can you associate multiple DMFs with different schedules on the same table in Snowflake? Why or why not? No, you cannot. In Snowflake, 
Scheduling is set at the table level, not the individual DMF level. So all DMFs associated with the table run on the same schedule. If different DMFs need different schedules, the workaround options are creating separate views or materialized views. It lets you attach different schedule to each view, even if they all read from the same base table. Each view runs its own set of DMFs independently. The other option is setting up custom orchestration logic. Use tools like Airflow, DBT or Snowflake tasks to control when specific DMFs run outside of Snowflake's default scheduling mechanism. Are system DMFs supported for remediate DMFs? Why or why not? Only a few system DMFs are supported for remediate DMFs because system data metric scan requires row level matching. DMFs like null count or invalid email are simple enough to identify and return failing rows directly, making them compatible. But more complex system DMFs like referential integrity, cross table checks or custom logic across columns don't easily return row level failures. That makes them unsuitable for remediation without extra logic. Next one, how would you troubleshoot a DMF failure or a performance issue? If a data metric function fails or runs slower than expected, I follow a structured approach to troubleshoot. Step one, I check the scheduled status by querying the information schema table data metric function references. It contains detailed metadata and you can filter by metric name, metric schema name, schedule and schedule status to isolate the failed run. And as a step two, I review the DMF logic. If it's a custom DMF, open the function definition and check for joins or subqueries that could be slowing things down. Edge cases like division by zero, null handling or incompatible data types, recursive logic or excessive looping that increases runtime, etc. In addition, I look at the table and data. Sometimes it's not the function, but the data. I check if the input table grows suddenly, are there data skews or nulls causing unexpected logic paths? Use profiling queries like select count star, null counts or value distributions to validate. Furthermore, I validate privileges and access. Sometimes failure could also be due to missing privileges. I make sure the role has usage on the DMF and modify on the target table. I check if any referenced objects like lookup tables are accessible by the role that triggers the DMF. Also, I review scheduling and frequency because too frequent runs can cause performance issues. If the DMF is running every minute but analyzing millions of rows, performance will naturally degrade. In that case, we should consider switching to a cron-based or change-triggered schedule. And then I rerun the DMF manually for testing. Sometimes I create a test wrapper to simulate the DMF execution with sample data. This isolates whether the failure is due to logic, data or scheduling. And we can also add logging or result flags for persistent issues. You can enhance the DMF to return status flags like pass or fail error and the error message. That way, each result gives clues without needing deep log dives every time. All in all, to troubleshoot a DMF, I combine system logs, SQL tuning, data checks, permission validations and smarter scheduling. So this approach ensures both function correctness and performance stability over time. That concludes the DMF interview Q&A. Whether you are preparing for an interview or assessing candidates, these questions help surface both conceptual clarity and hands-on experience with data quality automation. Remember, it's not just about what a DMF does. Knowing the why and how is what sets you apart.